Good evening, everyone. James over here with you. A word from the Lord coming to you. We're glad you're with us. Welcome to the program. We hope that you will uh, have your you have your Bibles and your pencil and paper, taking notes, and you're ready for a Bible discussion. We are looking forward to uh, a study from God's Word with you tonight. Of course, we always want to start off with our content information. A word from the Lord at gmail.com. You say you can reach me. A word from the Lord at gmail.com, and my phone number is two seven six three four zero. 2653 and we hope that you will take advantage of that we are assembling the church of christ is meeting in eden at 250 the boulevard uh sundays at 9 a.m 10 a.m on sundays and uh, 7 p.m on thursdays and so we uh want you to take advantage of that if you're in it in the eden area if you're in the other areas of uh of the uh, uh, listening viewing area if you're in Danville uh, 120 American Legion in Danville behind the old Dutch Shopping Center and, and uh, 823 Starting Avenue is where you can assemble with the Saints in uh, Martinsville so we hope that you will uh, certainly come out and visit with us friends we, we really enjoy meeting people and uh, especially those that are watching the program listening to the program we hope that you will uh, <clears throat> introduce yourself and come out and <clears throat> excuse me study God's Word with us I want to remind you about a word from the Lord television program. The same format, live call-in program, Sundays at 5 p.m. And that's on uh, 1490 uh, WLOE and 1420 WMYN. And if you're listening on uh, online, if you're watching this program online, you can listen at uh, uh, RCR. 24.com. That's Rockingham County Radio. You can download the app and listen to it on your smartphone, your tablet, whatever you might. Uh, if you're traveling, you can listen to it that way. Uh, we're trying to stream uh, this as well. So YouTube, you can watch it live on YouTube as well. So a number of ways you can uh, uh, get in contact or you can have access to a word from the Lord. And so we hope that you will take advantage of that. That's uh, Sundays at 5 p.m. And uh, we hope that you will, will tune in, listen, call. Uh, there's phone numbers that are there. If you want to call the, uh, uh, the radio program, I'll go ahead and give those to you. Don't call those now. But on Sundays, um, that's, it's area code 336. And the phone numbers are 427-9696. That's 427-WMYN. Or 627-9563. That's 627 W L O E. And that's Sundays at 5 p.m. So working the Lord coming to you uh, live on the radio as well. Uh, watch us on the watch us on the radio, uh, streaming online uh, at RCR24.com, Rockingham County Radio. Download the app, subscribe on YouTube, like and all that good stuff. So anyway, but we hope that you will take advantage of so many ways, friends, as you can study the Bible with us, and we hope that you will take advantage of that. Now, tonight. We're going to be talking about some people who are blind. And it's really a sad story. It is a very, very sad story uh, when you hear the conversation that we have. But it just reminds me of what Jesus said in Matthew 13, verse 13. Matthew 13, verse 13, our Lord said, as he was giving parables, as he was teaching parables, he explained why he taught in parables. And we're going to back up to verse... Uh, uh, well, let's start with verse 13. Here's what he says. He says, Therefore, therefore speak out to them in parables, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, and neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and ye shall not understand, and by seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. When you're talking to individuals who are so blind, they just do not want to hear the truth. They can't grasp the truth because they're so indoctrinated or ingrained in false doctrine. And friends, that's really what we where we are tonight. We're looking, we're going to be discussing a a couple of individuals that uh, I had the uh, opportunity to discuss, had a Bible study with, or I say Bible study, Bible conversation on the porch 
we were discussing uh, the Bible. We were door knocking during the tent meeting. And really, the conversation at the very end turned very, very sad. And uh, as you'll see later on. But it just made me think how, how people miss so much because they won't take the blinders of a man-made doctrine off of their eyes. Because they are so ingrained in it and have been so uh, enwrapped up in this man-made doctrine for so long, they just they can't get out of it, it seems. It's just hard to get out of it. And that's, that's really the way uh, sin is. The devil gets you comfortable where you are and then you don't want to leave. And such, as such is the case when you have people that you're talking to who are, are in these man-made churches. Now, the people that we were talking to were from the Missionary Baptist Church. I believe it was, I'm trying to think, uh, Grove, something Grove, Laura Grove, Lauren Grove, but uh, Missionary Baptist Church. And the sad thing is these were older people. These were older couple. I think the, uh, the lady said she was 90 and he was 91. He was a preacher. And that's the reason why I'm, I'm going to play this conversation. I didn't, I didn't turn my recorder on. He said he was a preacher and that's when I started recording him. Because this is what we're talking about, friends. Individuals like this man that we're going to be talking to tonight, he, uh, uh, he is in, in charge of people's souls. He puts himself in a position of teaching people and this is what people are being taught and what they're being uh, fed and this is what they consume. And you know the old saying, you are what you eat. And so this is what people turn into. And it's a sad, sad situation because... This can be avoided if individuals would just open their eyes and open their minds and open their hearts and li listen, just clearly listen to what the Bible says. Now, as we got back into the uh, van, as we were, got through talking to these individuals, this is the verse that was, that was said by one of our brethren. He said, just can't believe, you know, James 3.1 doesn't have any more impression. I'm paraphrasing what he said, but James 3.1 is what he mentioned. Because individuals like this have put themselves in a position to be masters or teachers. And James says, My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. <clears throat> so when you're putting yourself in a position of, of a teaching, it is a great, great responsibility. Friends, that's why we take this very seriously. We want to make sure that what we're telling you is, is true according to God's word. Jesus said, Sanctify them with the truth. Thy word is true. John 17, 17. And that's where we are. We're trying to convince people of the truth of God's word, and yet individuals like the gentleman that we're going to be talking to uh, uh, have been blinded and are blinding individuals where they cannot see the truth. Now, so tonight we're going to be talking about the Missionary Baptist Church, or because they're so blind, I call it the, the Missing Everything Baptist Church. So the missionary is missing everything Baptist Church. And this is what people miss. And this is not just this is not just uh, limited to the Missionary Baptist Church, but any any man-made church, any man-made creed that comes along and puts itself alongside of, or in reality above the Word of God, is going to blind people. It's going to keep people from seeing the truth. If you put if you put a a man-made creed, the filter of a man-made creed over the Bible, then you are not going to see clearly the Bible. You're not going to be able to see the truth of God's word, and that's really what it is. It's kind of like uh, the other day I was over at a at a brother's house. I've been outside, and my glasses they change when you're outside these transition lenses. They change, they get dark. And he said, "Well, come here, I want to show you something." So we walk in this house, and man, it's dark, and uh, I'm I'm stumbling around. I can't really see where I'm going, and then it dawned on me, man, I've got these glasses on. So I had to tip my glasses down where I could see. And he said, what's wrong? I said, well, I basically got sunglasses on. I've got blinders on, and here I'm walking through a, a, a little dark passageway. Actually, it wasn't in his house. It was in his, out in his shop. But I, I couldn't see because my glasses were dark. And that's exactly what people do when they pick up the Bible, and then they lay right on top of it a man-made creed, like the, 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 the Baptist manual, or the Methodist manual, or the Lutheran manual, or the Catholic catechism, or the any... Anything that man may comes along, man comes along and makes, he puts it on top of the Bible, and he can't really see it. He's blinding himself to the truth of God's word, and that's exactly what Jesus said. If you'll notice in <clears throat> uh, in uh, uh, Paul's letter to the uh, Corinthians, listen to what he said. 
uh, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians. Uh, he said, uh, if our, look at this, verse uh, 4. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image uh, of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ our, uh, Jesus our Lord, uh, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. And so the, the, if the gospel is hid, it's hid from them that are lost because the devil has come along and blinded them. So it causes you to miss things. So the, the missing everything Baptist church is really what we're looking at. Now, I'm going to start playing you. Uh, the conversation, and like I said, I, I wasn't recording the gentleman. He said he was a preacher, and so that's when I thought, well, this is a man. He's uh, been preaching for I don't know how many years. He's uh, he, he's put himself as an authority, and so this is what uh, how the conversation went. We'll listen to a little bit of it. We'll stop, and we'll we'll go from there. With people, different. Everybody claims to follow the Bible, you know, but no one no one's in agreement. It seems like, but if the Bible's right. Why are we all different? You know? Oh, they got to be saved. Right? But what, when but, they're saved, they'll go by the Word of God in the Bible. I agree with they'll that. Go by the Bible. I agree with that. But. All right, when they're saved, now listen, he said, when they're saved, they'll go by the Word. Well, friends, actually, in order to be saved, you go by the Word. I was agreeing with him. That's, that's pretty, much, pretty much true. Here he is. And when they're saved, they go by the word. If you are going to be saved, friends, you've got to go by this word. Now listen to what the Bible says. In James 1, verse 21, James 1, verse 21, James says, Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. So the word of God is able to save your souls. Paul said in Romans 1, verse 16, he said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God and the salvation to, the, to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. So the gospel, the word of God, is indeed the power to save. And just like the gentleman said, uh, uh, he said, if, if you're saved, you go by the word. Well, friends, being saved means you continue in the word. It's not just obeying the gospel and now you've got your ticket punched and now... You're good to go. That's what we talked about Sunday on, on the radio program. We're talking about once saved, always saved. It's not in the Bible. And yet people come along and they believe that. Why? Because somebody's come along and put a filter over the Bible, blinded your eyes, and caused you to miss the very fact that the Bible says you have to continue in the Word. Notice in John 8 and verse 31. John 8. John chapter 8 verse 31. Jesus said, as Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded the children of Israel. Uh, sorry about that. I think I just typed in Joshua there. Let's do it again. John 8, 31. Then said Jesus to the Jews, which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. <clears throat> now, friends, let me ask you this. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, you are my disciples. Indeed. If you don't continue in God's word, are you still a disciple of Christ? If you don't continue in his word, will you then know the truth? If you don't continue in his word, is the truth going to make you free? Now, our, our friends in the Missionary Baptist Church and the other Baptist churches and anybody else that believes once saved, always saved, they would say, oh yeah, you're, you're saved even though you don't continue. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Boy, once saved, always saved. You're good to go. Jesus said, if you continue. There's the contingency, if. There's the qualifying statement, if. There's the conditional ver the word that says, if you continue in my word. Friends, how do you miss that? Well, in the Missing Everything Baptist Church, that's what you do when you listen to a man-made doctrine. Paul said in Colossians, sorry about this, Colossians, let's look at this, Colossians 1, verse 23. Notice what he says. He says, if ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, 
and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard and which ye have been preached to every creature. Now, if ye continue in the faith, if you continue grounded and settled, and if you're not moved away, notice, from the hope of the gospel. Now, I hear people say all the time, well, once saved, always saved. Yeah, you can't lose that hope. You know, you, you, you're saved. No, you're given the hope of eternal life. But you can be moved away from the hope of the gospel. You can be moved away from the hope of eternal life. You can be moved away from the hope that you have once you obey the gospel. So you can be moved away from it. If you don't continue in it, the Bible is full of examples of individuals being told you must continue. In Acts 2 verse 42, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking the bread and prayers. They continued steadfastly. Friends, if you give up, if you stop, if you stop, then you are not going to be saved by the Word. You are only saved by the Word if you continue in it. Now, our friend, <clears throat> that's what he said. He said, well, if you're saved, you're going to continue the Word. Well, that's, that's a true statement. If you're saved, you're going to continue in it. But listen then what he says. Listen what he says. Where do you, in, the, in the Word of God, where do you get the Baptist, Methodist, Lutheran, Wesleyan, Pentecostal, See what I'm saying? If we're all going by the Bible, why don't we have all these things that aren't in the Bible? Yeah. You know You know what I'm saying? Well, we got Jesus Christ. I got my faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Right. He's the Son of God. I agree with that. Yeah. I yeah. agree with that. And I was baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> of the Holy Ghost. Okay. But, but... But why, but why did you wind up in the Baptist church? I'm in the Baptist church. I know, but why? It's not, a, it's not in the Bible. All right, so here he is. He was, he was baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the, who, who, the Ghost. All right? But he wound up in the Baptist church. Now, friends, let me tell you something. Why is it that the man couldn't tell me why or where the Baptist church is? If you've got faith, and you were baptized, how did you wind up in a church that's not in the faith, that's not in the gospel, if you're saved because you continue in the word, or if you're, what did he say? He said, you, you saved, you go by the word, but yet here he is not going by the word. Now, if you can't tell why you're in a church, or if you can't show me where that church is in the word of God, Friends, are you really sure that you're staying in the Word? Are you really sure that you're saved by the Word? Are you really sure that, you're, that you've been obedient to the Gospel at all? Listen to what Paul says in 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 14. 2 Timothy 3 and verse 14. Paul says, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Who did you learn about the Missionary Baptist Church from? From whom, let me get my English right, from whom did you learn about the Presbyterian Church, the Lutheran Church, the Apostolic Church? From whom did you learn about the Seventh-day Adventists? See, where did you learn about these things? You didn't learn it from the Bible. Now Paul said, be assured of the things that you've learned and because of, of who you learned them from. Now, friends, you can't say, well, I know that the Missionary Baptist Church is right because I know Paul taught about it. Paul didn't say a thing about the Missionary Baptist Church. You're missing everything by looking at the Bible with blinders on. Listen, the reason why I'm assured that the church that I'm in, the church that I'm a member of, the Church of Christ, the reason I'm sure about it is because I can read about it in the Bible. Now listen, if you've got so much faith, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. We all know this verse, Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Now if you've got so much faith that the church you're in is acceptable, acceptable to God, and that the church you're in is is uh, uh, going to save you 
and the church that you're in is um, a, a right, it's the part of the body of Christ, then why don't you find the Bible? If you have faith and you are baptized, like the man said, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, then why is it you wound up somewhere that the Bible never even talked about? How can you read this verse? How can you read the verse in, in the Great Commission, in Matthew 28, and <clears throat> verse 19? Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Now how is it you can read this verse and say, I did this, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. How can you teach this, read this, believe this, and yet wind up in something that Jesus never taught? Jesus teaching them to observe all things? Nobody. Jesus, the disciples, the apostles, they never said anything to anybody about being in a missionary Baptist church. You missing it? You're missing it. <clears throat> See this? This is what we're talking about. <clears throat> Who taught you? Who taught you that, that the Missionary Baptist Church was the right church? That it was an acceptable church? Now somebody's out there going, well, church doesn't save you, church doesn't matter. Well, just can you listen to the conversation? Because later on in the conversation, it's going to come into play. Later on in the conversation, it's going to be important to these people. All right? So, friends, you've got to ask yourself, if you're so certain about your salvation then you need to say, well, who taught me that? Because you didn't find the Bible. If you can find the Bible, if you can find the Bible, we've got a $1,000 that, that is yours if you can find a missionary Baptist church or any Baptist church, for that matter, in the Bible. Can't do it. All right? Let's listen on. Is it? The Baptist church is in the Bible? The Baptist church is in the Bible. And wh where is that? Can you tell me the verse? In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. I know, but where where is the Baptist church then? I got my testament right here. Can you give me the verse for the Baptist church? Not not right off, right now. All right, not right off. It's in there. It, oh, it's in there. I can't get it right now. Right now, not right off the top of my head. I can't. I can quote. I can quote. Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. I can quote that. But you know what? I can't find that verse that says Baptist church in the Bible. It's in there somewhere. Friends, you can read it from Genesis to Revelation. It's not going to be in there. You can, you can read it from the beginning to the ending. It's not in there. Now, why are you in the Baptist church? I said, I've got my testament right here. Let's pull it up. Let's read it. And you see him, I said, why are you in the Baptist church? not in the Bible. Where is it in the Bible? Crickets. Crickets. Couldn't hear. Couldn't hear anything about the Baptist church. Oh, but I'm sure it's in there. No, friends, if you're assured it's in there, show the verse. If you're so confident that what you believe is right, show the verse. So that's what I'm saying. Why would you want to... Okay. All right. So why, why would you, why would you uh, 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 be in a church that's not in the Bible now? Uh, in the name of the Father. Okay, but I got that. The name of the son. I got that. Now, who is the son? Jesus. The son is Jesus. Jesus Christ. And, 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 and I was baptized in the name of the Holy Ghost. That was the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. Okay. God. Okay, Spirit. okay. But here's my point. Here's my question, though. If you were baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, why did you wind up in the Baptist church? That's I'm the in the Baptist church. I know you are. I was baptized in the Baptist. I know. I'm the well, Baptist. You're not, you're not the hearing reason me. I'm the Baptist is because I believe in Jesus Christ. Well, the reason the reason I'm a, <laughs> I'm a Christian, and that and I'm in the I'm in the church that Christ built, the Church of Christ, because when I obeyed the gospel, I became a member of Christ's church, not the Baptist church. Well, if, it, if it's Christ Church, why is it in the Bible? Yeah. Yeah. Why is it in the Bible? When, when, when we accept Jesus Christ, that's all the service. All right, now, <clears throat> Fred, did you hear this? Did you hear the gentleman? He said, that's what makes me a Baptist. He's a Baptist, defending that, that, that he is a Baptist. 
My friends, listen. The Missionary Baptist Church, I think I got ahead of myself there. The Missionary Baptist Church is not the Church of Christ. And now we're baptized in the name of the Holy Ghost. That was the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. Oh, okay, I, was I got that. The name, I was baptized in the name of the Holy, of the Holy Ghost. Okay, well. That's what makes me a Baptist. That. <laughs> now friends, that's, that's where I wanted to go right there. All right. He is baptized in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. That's what makes him a Baptist. Friends, what? I mean, what are we missing here? We just read the verse. Where's the scripture that says if you're baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Ghost, that makes you a Baptist? No one in the Bible was ever in the Baptist church, and yet they were all baptized by the authority of Christ. They were all baptized by the authority of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. They were all baptized according to the scripture, but yet none of them, nary a one, wound up in any Baptist church not the missionary Baptist church, not the first Baptist church, not the second Baptist church, not the blessed Baptist church, not the seventh day Baptist church, not any kind of Baptist church. They didn't wind up in there. No one in the Bible was ever baptized and called a Baptist. Now somebody's going, oh, wait a minute, James. John was called a Baptist. Not because he was baptized. He was called a Baptist because he did the baptizing. Not because he was baptized. Listen to this. In John chapter 1. John chapter 1. Let's just get back there. John chapter 1 verse 31. John the baptizer says, I knew him not. Talking about Jesus. I knew him not but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore I am come baptizing with water. He was doing the baptizing. That's what made him a Baptist, not, not because he was in the Baptist church. Now let's skip, come on down. Look at verse 33. He says, I knew him not, but that he that sent me to baptize with water. John was sent from God to baptize with water. It was his job. He was a Baptist. He was a baptizer. Now, no one in the Bible was ever baptized and then call the Baptist. Name them. Find them. Show the scripture. Where someone was baptized and said, oh, now you're a Baptist. No. They weren't. In the New Testament, no one was ever baptized and called a Baptist. They weren't a member of the Baptist church. It wasn't in existence. Now, why is it someone says that makes me a Baptist? You know why? Because somebody has blinded their eyes to the truth. The truth of God's Word says, when you're baptized, you're added to the body of Christ. Not the Baptist church. Not the Baptist church. Alright? Let's get back to the conversation here. That, that doesn't make you a Baptist. Yeah, that doesn't no. make me a Baptist. You I, can't. Was, I was baptized in the name of the Father. Okay, I got that. I got that. Now, who is the Son? Jesus. The Son is Jesus. Jesus Christ. And, 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 and now we're baptized in the name of the Holy Ghost. That was the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. Okay. God. Okay, okay. But here's my point. Here's my question, though. If you were baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, why did you wind up in the Baptist church? That the I'm in the Baptist church. I know you are. I was baptized in the Baptist. Oh, he's baptized in the Baptist. He said, I'm baptized into the Baptist. Now, friends, you may be baptized into the Baptist church. I did not been baptized into the, into the body of Christ. See, when you can't find what you do in the Bible, then you're going to wind up somewhere the Bible doesn't talk about. Now, watch this. If you find being baptized in the Bible, you never wind up in the Baptist church. You never wind up into the Baptist church. Scriptural baptism puts you into a special place which is baptized into Christ. Let's notice. In Galatians chapter 3, verse 27. Galatians 3, 27. You've been baptized into Christ. Now why didn't he say as many of you have been baptized into the Baptist church? Because Paul didn't know about the Baptist church. He never heard of the Baptist church. Never thought about the Baptist church. Never considered the Baptist church. 
It wasn't even a, a twinkling in somebody's eye when Paul wrote this. As many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Let's look at one more. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6 and verse 3. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into His death? You're baptized into Jesus Christ. Find the verse that says baptized into the Baptist. Baptized into the Baptist church. Now, you might have been baptized. And it might have put you in the Baptist church. But that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean that it is the uh, baptism that the Bible talks about. You with me? Just because you were baptized, that doesn't mean it puts you into a place where the Bible says you're in Christ. There's a lot of different baptisms in the Bible. Do you know that? There's a lot of different baptisms that are mentioned throughout the Bible. Here's one right here. Matthew 21, 25. Matthew 21 and verse 25. Jesus said, The baptism of John. Now what did the baptism of John do? What did the baptism of John do? Did it put you in the Baptist church? No. The baptism of John was a baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Mark 1 verse 4. It didn't put you in the Baptist church. All it did was it prepared you for the Christ. It prepared you to believe on the cross when he, when he would come. It was a baptism of repentance. It was for the Jews who had not been following God, who had not been keeping the law of Moses, that added all these man-made traditions. <clears throat> and so it was a baptism of repentance saying, I'm turning, I'm leaving all these traditions of men that have been added to the, to the law of Moses, and I'm getting ready so that when the Messiah comes, I'll be ready. Acts chapter 19, verses 1 through Five, you'll find that's what Paul said. The baptism of John was so that people could believe on Christ. But that's a baptism. Now, is that the baptism that you were baptized with? You might as well have been because it didn't put you in the Baptist church. Might as well have been. It didn't, it, didn't, it didn't do anything for you. You might as well have been baptized with the baptism of John as you're baptized into the Baptist church. What about this? In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, Verses, verses one and two. Moreover, brethren, I would have you would not have you would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea, and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Is this the baptism that you were baptized with? It might as well be. Might as well be. See, at least this one. Did, did something for the children of Israel. It didn't, but being baptized in the missionary Baptist church didn't do anything for you. What about this one? You know, I'll tell you what. If one baptism just as good as another, how about you baptize this way? Look at this. For Mark 7, verse 8. For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men as in the washing, and that's the word baptism, the baptism of pots and cups and many other such th like things ye do. Now, what about that baptism? I mean, if, if your baptism into the, method, into the uh, missionary Baptist church is just as good as the baptism that the Bible says puts you in the cry, you might as well just go baptize that, that plate, baptize that cup, baptize that pan. See? See, friends, just because... There is a baptism. It doesn't mean that it's the one that puts you in the Christ. Now, Paul says, Paul says in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 5, he says there's one baptism. Ephesians 4 verse 5. There's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. So whatever this one baptism is, I know it's not John's baptism. It's not the baptism of Moses. It's not the baptism of these washing cups and pots and pans. What baptism is it? It's a baptism of water that one submits to when he obeys the commandments of God. Jesus said, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Mark 16, 16. It's the, this baptism that puts you into Christ. Galatians 3, 27. It's this baptism that puts you into the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. Romans 6, 3-7. 
That's the one baptism. But you know what, friends? It never puts you in the Baptist church. It doesn't even get you close to the Baptist church. As a matter of fact, it gets you further away from the Baptist church. See? So, not any kind of baptism is going to do, but one that is one that is followed according to the New Testament. That's the baptism that saves. Now listen. You say, well, I was baptized. The baptism of the New Testament, it doesn't put you in any kind of Baptist church. It doesn't put you in the missing everything. I mean, missionary Baptist church. It doesn't put you in any kind of Baptist church. So here's here's the question: Why are you why are you in it? Why are you in the Baptist church? How are you? If you're baptized into the Baptist church, friends, you are not baptized into Christ. Not baptized into Christ. All right. I know. Well, you're not, you're not, you're not the hearing reason me. I'm a Baptist because I believe in Jesus Christ. Well, the reason, the reason I'm, a, I'm a Christian, and that, and I'm in the, I'm in the church that Christ built, the Church of Christ. Because when I obeyed the gospel, I became a member of Christ's church, not the Baptist church. But it's Christ's church. Well, if it's Christ's church. All right. Here she said, the lady, the, the, the wife said. The, mission, the Baptist church is Christ's church. Friends, if the Baptist church is Christ's church, why didn't Christ say, so much, uh, say anything about it? What do you think about a husband that never talks about his wife? Never talks about his wife. Oh, is this guy married? Oh, no, he's not married. How do you know? Well, I never talk about, he never talks about his wife. Don't know her name. See that? Now, if, if the Baptist church is the Lord's church, why didn't he talk about it? You want to work from the Lord? Hello, James. How are you? I'm great. How are you doing? Fine, thank you. I, I was, I'm sitting here listening, and um, it would really make a difference who baptizes one. You know, um, I was baptized when I was 13, but with, and, and dumped, Three, uh, immersed three times into the water. But here's the thing. What's important, the, the most important thing is what you obeyed when you were baptized. Yes, what's coming, what's included in, in the word spoken from the pastor. No, it, it doesn't matter what was spoken. It's what were you, what were, why were you baptized? What, what church were you baptized into three times? The Brethren Church? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, here, here's the thing. That baptism put you into the Brethren Church. It didn't put you in the Lord's Church. See? That's what I'm saying. It's, you might as well have been, been baptized with the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the sink with the, with the cups and the saucers. That baptism didn't do anything for you other than to put you in a man-made church that's not in the Bible. Yes, sir. That's what that's what I wanted to that that's what I wanted to tell you. I see. You know, I okay. I have been associating with the Church of Christ since 1970 in Collinsville, Virginia. But um, I can see how I can't quite see how those three uh, Im immersions into the water, just those words. I think, like you said, what what I what I was baptized into would have to be the Word of God, baptized into the Bible. No, you, those three immersions that you went through in the in the in the Brethren Church only put you in the Brethren Church. It didn't do anything for you. I don't care what the preacher said; they didn't do anything. They just talking words. When you're baptized, I know, and God doesn't hear my prayers when, when because baptized, I haven't been baptized no, okay, into when, the Church of when, Christ. When, when you're baptized according to the Scriptures, it puts you into the Lord's body, the Church of Christ. When when a person obeys the gospel, they're baptized into Christ according to Christ's commands, and that and that's a big difference. See, you're doing what Christ said to get where Christ said you'll be. 
So if you're being baptized and you wind up in the Missionary Baptist Church or the Brethren Church or wherever church, that's not what Jesus said. You didn't follow Jesus' directions or you would have wound up where Jesus said. All right? Yes, that, sir. That's the, that's the, yes, sir. That, that's the I, I see yeah. that clearly. Okay. I wanted to tell you I see how wrong I was at 13 years old. Right. Okay. Thank you very well, much. I appreciate your call. I appreciate your call. All right. So... This the the the, the baptism that put this man in the missionary Baptist church. It didn't put him in the Lord. It's whining in the Bible. Yeah, yeah. Whining in the Bible. When, when, when we accept Jesus Christ, that's all. That's all. That's all necessary. When you accept Jesus Christ, that's all that's necessary, friends. Do you know how many times people say that's all you have to do? They say, well. Believe is all you have to do. But that means you're leaving out repentance. Well, confess is all you have to do. Well, that means you're leaving out repentance. Repent is all you have to do. Well, now you're leaving out belief. See? When you say that's all you have to do, you're excluding all the things that Christ says you have to do in order to be saved. Hear the gospel. Believe the gospel. Repent of your sins. Confess Christ before man. Be baptized for the remission of sins. Just accepting Jesus is not all you have to do. But this is why these people are blinded. They've been blinded by missionary Baptist doctrine, and that's why they can't see the truth. Listen. Father, and Son, and Holy Ghost. Well, then we just throw the rest of the Bible away? Huh? So should we just throw the rest of the Bible away? What Bible are we? I'm saying, should we just throw the rest of it away if that's all we need? No, no, I'm not. I'm I'm saying, well, here's, here's my question. I ain't throwing nothing that God have anything to do with that way. All right. Now, so I said, well, if, if that's all you have to do is accept Jesus, let's just throw the rest of the Bible away. Right? I mean, if all you got to do is say, I accept Jesus, if that's it, Let's, let's throw the rest away, boy. God could have saved a whole lot of trees. He could have saved a whole lot of time, a lot of ink. He could have saved a whole lot of lot of writing if he had just put on one little... Man, you could get just ask Jesus to be your Savior. He could put that in one verse and have, you know, you could write that on a postcard and still have room to say hi to Mama. You could write that on a stamp and still say hi, say hi to Mama. So let's get rid of all the rest of this book if that's all we need to do. Right? If that's what you need to do to be saved and then you're once saved, always say, boy, man, we could, we could con condense that. You talk about a Reader's Digest condensed. That's condensed on down there. So I said, let's just throw the rest of it away. He said, no, I ain't throwing nothing away that God has anything to do with it. But you know what, friends? If you're in a Missionary Baptist Church or any other denomination that man has made, you're throwing everything away that God says. That's what you're doing. You're throwing it away. In, in Acts 13, verse 46, listen to what Paul says. Acts 13, <clears throat> verse 46. Acts 13, verse 46. I think I typed the wrong word. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should have first been spoken unto ye, but seeing ye... Put it from yourselves, seeing you put it from you, and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. You see this word here? You put it from yourselves? That's getting away. That's throwing it away. That is throwing it away. Friends, when you reject what God says, you're throwing it away. Now, you may not literally throw the Bible away, you may not literally be throwing the Bible in a trash can or throwing it in the fire or, or getting rid of it. But that's what you're doing when you reject what he says. You're putting it away from you. You're throwing it away. You're saying, get that out of here. I don't want to hear that. Now, how do I know that? How do I know that? <clears throat> because look what the Bible says. The Bible says you put it away from yourself. In, in Luke 7, 29, Luke 7, 29 and 30, Listen to what it says. And all the people that heard him and the publicans justified God being baptized with the baptism of John. But the Pharisees and the lawyers rejected the counsel of God against themselves being not baptized of him. Now that's a different word. 
But it's the same idea of you're putting it away from you, you're rejecting it, not receiving it. Now the man said, I, I don't throw anything away that God has something to do with. Oh, really? Well, you're rejecting His Word. God wrote it. You're rejecting His commands that God commanded. You're rejecting the blood of His Son, which Jesus uh, shed on the cross and purchased His, his church with. Acts 20, verse 28. Take it unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God which He has purchased with His own blood. When you say, I'm in the Missionary Baptist Church and I don't need, any, I don't need to be in the Lord's church, Guess what you're throwing away? You're saying the Lord's church is not worth anything. You're actually saying His blood is not worth anything. Because His blood is in His body. And baptism is what puts you into His death. So if you say, well, I'm not going to do what the Lord says, guess what you're putting away? You're putting away the command to be baptized. You command, you're putting away the, the blood that he shed on the cross for the remission of sins. You're, you're trotting underfoot the Son of God and count the blood of the covenant wherewith, this is Hebrews 10, 29, wherewith uh, <clears throat> he was sanctified an unholy thing and hath done despite unto the Spirit of grace. That's what you're doing. You say, well, I, I believe all the Bible. If you believe all the Bible... What about that verse that says, He that believeth in his baptized shall be saved? What about the verse that says, The church of Christ salutes you? What about the verse that says, The like figure when the baptism doth also now save us? What are you going to do with that verse? You're going to put it away. You're going to reject it. See, friends, you might as well be like old uh, Jehoi Je uh, uh, Jehoiakim that. Cut the, cut the scroll up and burn it in the fire. That's what you might as well be like. You might as well throw it away and burn it. Because you're not taking everything that's in it. You're not listening to what God says. You might as well burn it. So you can say, I'm not throwing anything away that God has something to do with, but yet, that's exactly, that's exactly what you're doing. Alright? Now, let's get back to our conversation. Are you adding to it? Well, you, you're saying you're in the Baptist church and it's not in the Bible. <laughs> now, see, that's funny. That's funny to him. I'm not throwing it away. Well, you must be adding something to it then. Friends, if you say that being in a church that's not in the Bible is acceptable to God, then you're adding to the Bible. This is what God says He accepts. Now, how can you be in a church? How can you be in a church that's not in the Bible and say, "Well, that's okay"? No. See that? Uh, oh, we're oh, we're offering a thousand dollars. Anybody can show the Baptist listen, church in the Bible. Listen, listen. I'd like I sure like to find the verse, ma'am. I'd like to find the verse. Listen, I just, I just believe in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I do too. I do too. But I believe in the church that Jesus built. He said, "Upon this rock, I uh, build uh, my His church, right? My church. My church in the hell. That's right. That's right. Matthew sixteen eighteen. That's going with All right. Now listen to what he says here. Listen. Let's get back to it. Well, but he said, "My church, not the Baptist church." It's his church. It is. He is the Baptist. Jesus is the Baptist. Jesus was a Baptist? Yeah. He didn't talk about the Baptist church. Well, Who started the Baptist church? John the Baptist? Jesus, uh, uh, Jesus. Now, Jesus was a Baptist. I said, who started the Baptist church? John? The man says Jesus. The wife says John. Well, which one was it? Jesus. Which one was it? Now, ma'am, you're saying John the Baptist started the Baptist church. Is that right, sir? Uh-huh. Well, whoever started, we believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. All right. Jesus was a Baptist. John started the Baptist church. Did Jesus lie? When Jesus said in Mark 6, Matthew 16, 18, Upon this rock I'll build my church. Was he really talking about John's church? Or maybe he built his church and he gave it to John. 
Is that it? No, that can't be it because John the Baptist said that he was going to decrease and let Christ increase. John never had a church. Jesus was going to build his church. John the Baptist never even thought about starting a church. And you got people today, they want to make John the founder of the Baptist church. Well, if he was the founder of the Baptist church, he himself said he's going to go out of business. He said, I'm going to decrease. Did John build the Baptist church? Did Jesus build John's church? Was Jesus in the Baptist church? Was he in John's church? See what, what blinding your eyes to the simple truth is? If Jesus said, upon this rock I'll build my church, why would you be in a church that's not even wearing the name of Christ? See, that's what I'm saying. The missionary Baptist church is the missing the everything Baptist church. Because once you start missing it, you miss everything. All right? Okay. Well, I'm, I'm not going no other way. But okay. Now, I don't know if you heard, heard her say this. Let me see if I can back up just a little bit. Now, ma'am, you're saying John the Baptist started the Baptist church. Is that right, sir? Uh-huh. Well, whoever started. Whoever started. Doesn't matter. You are, Did John start the Baptist church? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if John started the Baptist church. Well, my Bible says, except the Lord built a house, they labor in vain that built it. So if John built his house, he's not the Lord. But Jesus has a house. In Hebrews 3 and verse 5, Jesus has a house. And it's the church of Christ. Moses verily was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which were spoken after. But Christ, as a son over his own house, whose house are we? If, there's that if again, if we hold fast the confidence and rejoicing of the hope, firm unto the end. Jesus has a house. I don't know about John. I never read about John's house. But apparently John has a house, but... Even people in John's house say it doesn't really matter who started it. Well, if it doesn't matter who started it, why are you even in it? Why are you so concerned about being in it? All right? We believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm not going no other way but... Okay. Well, can I, can I ask your name? You, you told me you're a preacher. Can I ask your name? Yes. Yeah. What, what's your name? My name is Dr. James Cabell Jr. Dr. James Cabell Jr.? Cabo, C A B E S. Okay. All right. From and uh, so who are you? But you know. All right. Now <clears throat> I'm gonna try to skip on through. We're out of time. Uh, they said they don't have a preacher out there at the Baptist Church anymore. He's he's a retired preacher. So I said, I said, well, what about me? I said I'd go out there and preach. On the sickness now. Right. Right. And I give, I, I give, I don't go. I, I, okay. Well, I'd, I'd be glad to go out and preach for him. God I'm a preacher too. You have to be a missionary Baptist. Oh, you have to be a missionary Baptist. Okay. Now, wait a minute. He said going out there. She said, you got to be a missionary Baptist to preach in the missionary Baptist church. Well, I thought it didn't matter who ever started. Doesn't matter who started. What difference does it make who preaches in it? Right? Paul said, I preach the same thing everywhere. 1 Corinthians 4, verse 17. Everywhere he went, he, he preached the same thing. Now, do you mean to tell me missionary Baptists, they preach something different than everybody else? If they're all part of the body of Christ, they ought to be speaking the same thing, right? See? See what we're missing? The missionary Baptist church makes people miss everything that concerning their salvation. That's why it's so dangerous here. Now, here's what the, here's what the wife says. Okay. Well, I would be a missionary Baptist if I could find it in the Bible. I, didn't, I can't find a missionary Bible Baptist in the Bible. All right. Well, y'all, you, you look like you're waiting on you waiting on a ride. Okay. Well, you dressed up. I thought maybe you're ready for Bible study or something. So. Okay. All right. Well, I tell you what. I'm I'm gonna. I think you're supposed to be willing to witness to the people. Well, I'm. They don't know Christ. Well, I... she's absolutely preaching to people that don't know Christ right there. I'm gonna skip over here and do just a little bit more. Let's see what we got here. How about that? Well, 
Yeah. We've been going for one week. We're going for another week. Do you get the way? Yeah, you can have that. Okay. You sure can. We we not we not hooked up in this thing that thing. Right. We we stay with the missionary Baptist. Okay. We were born in the missionary Baptist. Really. Born in the missionary Baptist. We were born in the missionary Baptist. Friends, you know what? No such thing in the Bible. The Bible says you must be born again. John 3 verse 5. So if you're in a missionary Baptist, you need to be born again. Now you may think, well I've been born again I put me in a missionary Baptist church. Well guess what? Get born again then. Born again again. Again be born again. However much, whatever, how many times you got to be born again in order to be born right and be in the Lord's church, that's what you need to do. Because friends, you're not born again according to the Bible and wind up in the the Baptist church. Now, I want to... uh, uh, let me skip on down here. I've got a little bit of time. Uh, let's see here. I really want to. Baptist, you, when you are baptized, you are totally saved. You are, you are saved when you believe in Jesus. Okay. That's when you believe in the Father and the Son. All right. The Son, I got all that. And the Holy Ghost. I got that. But that's not what the Bible is saying. The Bible, the Bible puts baptism before salvation, not after salvation. It's in the Bible. Well, I know, I know y'all do because you have you have the Baptist church. I can't find. I've, I've asked y'all what, where's the Baptist church in the Bible. Can you find a verse? Where's your church at? I don't have a church. I'm in the, I'm in the Lord's I'm in the Lord's church. My, the church I the, the, the church I'm in is the Church of Christ. Upon this rock, I'll build my church. It's not, it's, not the, it's not the missionary Baptist. I right. not the You're quoting it right. You're quoting it right. You're quoting it right, but it's not, the, it's not the missionary Baptist church. It's just the Lord's church. Romans 16, 16, the churches of Christ salute you. I know that. Now, where's the verse that says the Baptist churches salute you? Well, it's all Call it what you want. Well, if we can call it, if we call it what we want, if, if we call it, if we call it what we want, let's call it, let's call it the Jehovah's Witness Church. No, no, Jehovah's Witness, no, no church. Oh, Jehovah's Witness, no church. Call it what you want. See, friends, see how much they're missing in the mission, missing everything Baptist Church, missionary Baptist Church. It's a sad, sad, sad. And the sad thing is. She said, I'm going to stay in the Missionary Baptist Church. Well, you said it don't matter what you call it. You're going to stay in the Missionary Baptist Church. Well, that's right. I, and you're just losing time talking to her. Okay. All right. Well, that's when part of the way soon as that. Losing time talking to her, trying to convince her to get out of the Missionary Baptist Church that's not even in the Bible. Wouldn't see it, couldn't see it, didn't want to see it. Friends, that's a sad, sad, sad ending to that conversation. You went to what? We got, we got back in the van. My daughter, she's with me. And she's just crying. I mean, it tore her up to hear this lady, 91-year-old lady, saying that she was not going to, that she was not going to change, that she's going to stay in the Missionary Baptist Church. Friends, that, that was terrible. That was a terrible, terrible thought for my, for my daughter to know this lady was going to be lost. Friends, we want to help people. We want to help people. But if you're so blind that you're going to miss everything, some people just can't be helped. Like Felix, he said, another coming season, I'll, I'll hear from you. Put it off. Friends, don't put it off. Friends, we're out of time. Word from the Lord, Sundays 5 p.m. on 1490, 1420 in radio. Call us, let us know you're listening. And until next time, friends, always make sure you're getting a word from the Lord. Have a good night.